Hey people, it's Scott again with the Loose Bag Out. This video is more for the newer people. People that don't quite know us yet. Don't quite, you know, they're not used to our video style. Whatever it is. Like new subscribers, all that kind of stuff. Hey people, we love you. Usually it's me and Faye. Sometimes it's just me. But it's usually me and Faye. Right now, Faye's in the church. Oh yeah. By the way, we live in a little tiny house outside of a church. A little tiny house on the back of our truck. I would show you the rest of the house, but I mean, it's really only like a couple feet that way. Like, and the place is a wreck. So, like, there's there's the other end of the house. That's it. Oh crap! I see. I'm gonna go break it through. And this is the other end of the house. House is literally four and a half feet wide on the inside by six and a half feet long. And just under four foot on the bed, like ceiling. So, pretty short in here, too. There ain't no standing up. I mean, you could try. I did once. Bad brain fart moment. Somebody knocked at the back door and I was half asleep. And I, my brain said, get up, dummy. I tried to stand up and I knocked myself clean out. Hey, it happens. <laughs> There's a freaking dent up there from it, too. I'm a half an idiot, people. I, it happens, all right? Anyway, me and my wife ended up homeless about three years ago. And we were living in the front of our little S10 truck. And seats don't go back at all. I mean, it was just... It was bad. It was as cold as could be. Smack dab, middle of winter. We started building this thing like two months in. We were like, I finally talked her into it. But only, only after I conceded to the white picket fence, the little like cabin look on the side. And she wanted that big barn door. So, I mean, hey, I didn't give a crap as long as I could build something to put a roof over us and I could lay the frig down. I, I didn't care what this house ended up looking like. Well, she was very specific. I even drew it out for her. She, she approved the plans. So, she let me build it. And I mean, it wasn't finished off, like, right away. I mean, shit, the first year we didn't have windows in it. Like, all that crap came later.
Although, uh, TB came pretty, pretty early. Because they couldn't do it without the TV. But hey, you need, you need your creature comforts. Yeah. You know? Funny thing is, it's like, this house is almost a replica of our old house. I mean, we used the same sofa cushions. It's got paneling on the walls like our old basement used to have. Like, it's about the same size TV. <laughs> like, even, like, the woodwork in here is, like, reminiscent of our old place. Gives it, like, an instant homey feel for us, you know? And you gotta have that, you know? You gotta try to, like, throw those personal touches in. It just make it feel like home. Because why not? I mean... If you gotta build something anyway, you might as well build it as homey as possible. As comfortable to you as you can get it. Or else, what's the point, you know? But now. kind of hit the <clears throat> hit the extent of what we can do or want to do to this house so we have a little schoolie that pretty soon we're going to start working on I think he's got like you could fit four of these inside that thing We can put real cabinets in and a real countertop. A real bed. And there's still just enough room to have like a little sitting down watching TV area. I'm sold on the real bed. I really don't care what else gets put in that damn thing. I don't even care. Real mattress. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I love this little house. But this is the year that Who's a go part one. <laughs> Comes to an end. Lose a big part two starts starts up because we, we need to make a bigger house, and that bus is it. So please hold while uh yeah. So, <coughs> over the last three years, the first two years, we spent driving around in the Luzabago. Um, the first two months were us running around like crazy people. In a truck that barely ran. It wasn't legal. I mean, we had no insurance, no tags, no... No nothing. Nothing. Uh, no brakes. 
we're riding on just the emergency brake. Uh, completely like blown out front end. Like, it was janky at best. <laughs> Oh, it was mad sketchy. So, over like course of a couple of months, we stayed at a couple of pet boys. And, like, during the day, I'd be out there with my toolbox and my coveralls on. And, uh, I'd be working on the truck. And people would see me out there working on stuff, and they'd ask me if I'd throw wipers on their car for like 20 bucks. <laughs> Break yeah. Or, you know, do this or do that or whatever. So, frick yeah. So, while we're sleeping at the friggin' Pet Boys, uh, and working on our vehicle, we are also doing side jobs in the parking lot. Half of the people just assumed I worked at Pet Boys. Probably because I was wearing a set of blue coveralls that matched the outfit that they were wearing at Pet Boys. But hey. It worked. What do you want from me? That's how we got the damn truck up and running. <laughs> And we would also stay down at a couple of the truck stops from time to time. And again, they just thought I was a truck mechanic. So they didn't bother us at all. We spent a lot of time running around from place to place, too. Like, once we got into this thing, we were in this thing by March. So, it was like three months, and we were already living in this little house. So, uh, first two years, we were bouncing around from place to place. Like, one day here, two days there. One day here, we'd try to push it and go three days somewhere and end up getting a knock at the door to tell us to leave. It was just relentless, constantly moving. But we had fun with it. We had fun losing 20 friggin' jobs at least in a row. Because, like, you get bounced out. Like, you try to, like, stay somewhere as close as possible to where you got to be working. But then you get to knock at the door, so you got to move further away. And then you find a spot. You try to park up. Nope. Got to go. Ah, fuck. All right. So you finally end up somewhere, like, two counties over. By the time you freaking pack up, like get all set up and you get some sleep, it's time to get up and roll. Okay. But you ain't expecting to be stuck in traffic for an hour and a half. Fuck. We lost so many effing jobs like that. Or you're just walking in there just like a zombie. Always fun. Always fun. But. We ran into problems with this little house. We, we love this little house. Don't get me wrong. We love all the attention that it's gotten. 
most of the freaking time. There's a lot of times that, that attention can be bad. Because uh, you can't hide this thing in a parking lot. I don't know. There's just no stealth camping when the Luther Bay goes involved. Oh, hell no. Ain't nothing stealthy about this damn thing. So, yeah, we, we can't tell you about stealth camping. Nah, that's not our forte. Or the opposite of that. <laughs> But, like, we don't fit in at RV parks. We don't have the little freaking connections. We don't have any of that kind of crap. They look at us and they're like, well, you can't just sleep in your vehicle. What? You look over and it's like, it's a bunch of RVs in a row. There's your vehicles. People are sleeping in them. What are, what are you talking about? Like, how is this not the same damn thing? No. Doesn't qualify. Like, there's not a single RV park around here. Not even Lone's friggin' Pond that will let us, like, camp up. Like. But that's okay. That school bus, on the other hand, that thing's going to have the proper plugs. And, like, I already know Lump's Pond is okay with a uh, schoolie. They're okay. Me and Faye are going to get the friggin' stay there. Even if it's just once, for, just to go, heh. Because <laughs> we like to do that. Huh. So anyway. Me and Faye started... Like, our first year. Like, you end up hanging out with people in the parking lots that you stay in. You end up meeting people. You end up talking to other homeless people. And for us, like, when we first got out here, we were lost. We were just like, we didn't know what the freak to do. So us being the clowns that we are, we turned everything into a game. Like, literally everything. Like, we couldn't stop clowning around. And it was like right at the beginning of COVID. So it was kind of awesome. Like... As soon as we like, there's Honey Bunny, most likely, yeah, hey baby, yes, I'm making a video, it's alright, would you like a cigarette? I have one, oh, okay. I was just coming to see what you were up to. No, well, say hi to the peoples. Hello, hello, <laughs> right. just coming to bug them. Well, it was a little chilly, and the door's a little creepy. Yeah, sorry. The door is squeaky. You need to put something on it. I know. But hey, at least it'll make some good Halloween noises. We need a video. Uh, we need to record it. You need to do a soundtrack of the door? Yeah. Okay. For next Halloween, that would be some good Halloween noises. Halloweeny? Yeah. <laughs> 
annoying creaky door. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> And that was the missus. She misses everything. <laughs> anyway. Hold on a moment. So anyway. Most of the parking lots we ended up in. Like, when it came to, like, people living in their vehicles, we usually had the only one that was up and mobile or up and running. So, like, when we went out to go get, like, hit a church or hit the food bank or whatever, like, they give you all kinds of freaking crap that, like, you either got to cook that crap up or you need a refrigerator. Oh, we ain't got no refrigerator. I did have a little, like, camping stove. So we'd set up in a parking lot and just cook up everything. And feed everybody in the parking lot. Because it was the only damn thing that made any sense. So, we did that for a while. And then we started being able to find places where we could get cans of stuff. And like we were able to start hooking up some of the homeless. Not just the homeless in their cars, but the homeless that were out in their tents. And we just kept it up for the first two years. And then uh, we ran into Sharon, which is one of the pastors that was here at uh, Christ the Cornerstone. And during that two years, me and Faye had been looking at different churches and just checking ones out here and there, you know. Never quite found a place where we fit. At least until we came here. And then, like, at first we were a little uncomfortable because it was like, this place just felt a little too comfortable. You know? It felt a little too homey. <laughs> but, like, Sharon probably offered us to park up here probably four or five months before we ever did but when we did we were like okay we gotta go like we stayed here for like two days straight and like we woke up and we started talking to each other we were like you know we need to start packing up and get out of here because like i don't want to get that knock at the door you know Dude, literally, within friggin' seconds, we get a knock at the door. Me and Faye are like, <sighs> and we look at each other, and we're like, oh, crap. We open up the door, and there is Sharon. We're like, we know, we know, we're, we're going to get going. And she was like, get going where? She was like, I'm just coming out to give you guys a set of keys. We're like, to what? She was like, to the church. We're like, for what? So, like, so you guys can go in and use the bathroom whenever you need. You can use the kitchen if you need to. If it gets too cold out here, you can come in and just sleep inside. We're like, wait, what? Huh? Oh, she threw us. But, uh...
The church really liked what me and Faye were doing with helping out the other homeless. And so they decided to uh, help sponsor us and back us. And we turned what we were doing into what we now call Project Home, which is a homeless outreach. So we've been doing that now for the last year. So, me and Faye are still technically homeless, but we live in a little itty bitty tiny house on the back of our truck in the parking lot of a church. So, like, we're not homeless, we're home. We're home. So, you know, we just don't really have an address. And. You know, standing abilities. <laughs> but I mean, you got the parking lot to be able to stand up. You know, we take care of the church. We're kind of like the the groundskeepers or night watchmen or cleaning staff or. Pretty much anything the church needs. Like we volunteer doing like pretty much every damn thing. Uh, and on the side we also do Project Home. So. It pretty much takes up pretty much all of our time. <laughs> Other than that, we're sleep deprived and usually half, half stupefied. Usually punch drunk, being a little goofy. But yeah, you know, we don't, we don't get as much sleep as we used to, and that's okay, because we have fun doing it. I. We're enjoying life as much as we can, you know. We might work long hours and we might not get eight hours of sleep. But hey, who needs all that? But anyway kind of running a little long on this so I'll just wrap it up by saying I love you guys thanks for tuning in uh be good to each other and later